Hello, thanks for checking out my video. Today I want to work on letter construction. While I work on my letter construction, I want to take the opportunity to also work on some fine motor skills with my glue stick and my scissors. So today I'm going to be using this heavyweight paper and I'm going to cut out these uh, shapes here and then I'm going to glue them onto some cardboard and it's kind of th some thin cardboard actually I got it from a cereal box I just kind of unfolded the cereal box and then cut along the middle of it and then I also have this construction paper and I can use the construction paper if I want to or I can just set it aside the construction paper is maybe used for someone with a little bit more advanced scissor skills so for this particular activity I'm going to set it aside uh, but if I wanted to I could use it in, um, in lieu of the heavy weight paper or instead of the cereal box. And I'm using the cereal box cardboard as opposed to uh, maybe like a, a thicker cardboard because when I go to cut out the arcs, I want my scissors to be able to maneuver. Uh, the, the, the thicker cardboard is great if you're gonna be cutting out just straight lines. It's great, it really holds your scissors in place and you can cut straight lines without any real uh, problems at all with the scissors. But when you go to start maneuvering, the cardboard really kind of loses its shape and it's hard to maneuver the scissors around those corners. So I use this cereal box cardboard just to demonstrate it's a little bit easier for my scissors to start turning those corners when we go to cut out our, arc, our arcs. And as we're completing this activity, we want to be mindful of the technique that we're using and the fine motor skills that we're using with our tools. So really make sure that we have kind of a, uh, like maybe a, maybe a lateral tripod grasp or a dynamic tripod grasp or even a grasp with extended fingers. But we want to work on our fine motor skills more than we do our gross motor skills here. And then with our scissors, we want to make sure that we orient them correctly hold them vertically, kind of on a vertical plane, so we're going straight up, and then pronating around the corners and deviating, and then also using some good bilateral coordination. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started, and to start, I think I'm gonna cut out these shapes first, but I don't really want to maneuver this big of a piece of paper around. Um, I actually have two of those, so I'm gonna put one to the side. And then I'm going to cut just kind of roughly out the uh, down the middle here so I can separate these shapes a little bit more. So now I have straight line shapes over here and the arcs over here. And I can do a little warm up practice just by cutting in between these two arcs to separate them before I get into a little bit of the finer trimming of this arc for this piece. But for now, I'm gonna start with the straight line shapes just as a little warm up. So I'm gonna put my arcs to the side and I can do another rough cut right down the middle of this one. See my hand reposition, my non-dominant hand reposition as I went along. That's to add stability to the paper. Um, if your child does not reposition their non-dominant hand to stabilize the paper, you really do kind of get this paper that just flops around and then maybe your scissor skills aren't as accurate. So make sure we're taking a moment to stop with the scissors, reposition with our non-dominant hand, and then continue to cut. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here with this the smaller pieces, just cut them right down the middle. So now we have two small pieces, one long straight piece, one big arc, and one small arc. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other piece of paper. So now let's go ahead and trim these up. As we're trimming these shapes up, we're going to be using a little bit more fine motor precision. 
So now would be a good time to add a visual cue or a tactile cue to really highlight this boundary here so that we don't use our scissors to cut off a corner of our shape. So for our tactile cue, I like to use a popsicle stick, but today I'm gonna to skip the tactile cue and go straight to a visual cue and use a red crayon. I just have it lying around and I'm going to draw a straight line all the way down on my uh, straight line right here for the boundary of the shape. This will add just a little bit of extra contrast so that it really highlights the boundary when I go to start cutting. So I don't want to go, I don't want to go all the way through the red zone. I want to make sure that my scissors, you know, stay in the red zone here. That's the, kind of the international stop sign. So you can use the visual cue if you want, or you can just leave the, the, the thin black line as it is and continue cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these up. Now I'm going to move on to the long vertical strips. And for this one, I think I'm going to add a little visual cue, a couple dots maybe, along the boundary here. And this is just a visual cue for my student, just a visual target so that they continue to scan ahead of their scissors to seek the boundary and then use their scissors to cut along that boundary. So I wanna increase my chances of that, of that happening just by adding a little visual cue as a target along the way. And again, as we're cutting, we want to really focus in on our orientation of our, of our scissors correctly and uh, make sure that we're on this nice vertical plane. It's easy to cut offline if we're kind of holding our scissors maybe off to the side a little bit. But for the vertical strip, we really want to keep our scissors on this vertical plane. Um, if your child's having a little fatigue maybe, you know, with this activity, you can stabilize their arm on the table and that'll really afford you the opportunity to isolate your fine motor skills uh, to complete the scissor task. So let's continue and cut these out. Doing some nice stabilization with my non-dominant hand. I'm cutting along the boundary with my uh, dominant hand with my scissors. I'm stopping with the scissors to reposition with my dominant or nine with my non-dominant hand. Cutting with scissors to my visual cue, repositioning with my non-dominant hand. Cutting along the boundary, repositioning. There's my visual cue. All right. Now let's go ahead and finish this up. Perfect, now I have two long vertical strips and four short vertical strips. So before I move on to the arcs, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my station a little bit. Just another opportunity to use your fine motor skills or have your child use their fine motor skills when they go ahead and clean up the station. Just removing some of the items out of the way and then you can use your pincer grasp to pick up each piece one by one crumble it up in the in the palm of your hand. This is really working on some great manual dexterity skills, some nesting. These are all skills that we're using when we demonstrate radial precision in the writing process. So this is just kind of a, a fun little way, maybe pretend that your hand is eating the paper and just eat the paper one piece at a time. Or if you want to speed things up, you can help your child just to kind of sweep things out of the way and use the non-dominant hand to catch all the pieces as they fall off the table. Now we have a clean workstation and we can get on to the arcs. So before we work on, let's see, before we work on these bigger ones, I think I'm gonna practice with one of these smaller ones here and really focus on turning our, our dominant hand over 
and also using our non-dominant hand to assist with cutting out these arcs. So to start, I'm going to start on the outside and I'm going to really use both of my hands together as I turn the corner. Just cut very slowly around the corner so that we're not cutting too far ahead, but really using both hands together with some great bilateral coordination to manipulate these tight corners here. Perfect. And then we can trim up this side. Just a couple more vertical snips. We'll go ahead and just cut all the way across. Now we're going to get into this inner circle part. So we're really going to have to use a lot of our technique that we just used on this outside part, but with a little bit more precision here. So maybe even using smaller cuts as we go along and then repositioning the paper with our non-dominant hand after each cut. So we're just kind of moving together maybe a little bit or making a cut and then moving the paper. That works too. We're gonna go slow all the way around. We have this piece, we don't need it, we can save it for later. What we want is this piece right here. So I'm gonna save that in our pile. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up. Now I'm ready to move on to my large arcs. And for this one, I'm gonna use the same visual cue that I used for my uh, long vertical strips. So I'm just gonna put a couple red dots along the way just to keep my visual um, focus kind of forward, moving forward ahead of my scissors and then using some, some great visual motor integration to complete the arc accurately. So I'm gonna do that for the outside and then also for the inside. Your child can do this part too. If you would like to have them do that, that's okay. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this one as well. So just putting a couple visual cues along the border just to really highlight where our visual attention should be ahead of our scissors. Perfect. Now I'm ready to cut these out. And again, as we're cutting, we're really working on some great fine motor skills with our, our scissors and some, uh, good, some really great bilateral coordination really with our non-dominant hand and manipulating this paper so that we can cut accurately along this border. So I'm using my scissor hand and I'm pronating my scissor hand here. So that's kind of turning it over on its belly, if you will. And I'm also using my non-dominant hand, kind of almost like the center of a bicycle wheel, just right there, turning the, turning the arc around. I'm keeping my scissors kind of on this nice angle here as I'm turning the corner, using both hands together to cut accurately. I'm using my visual cues, these red dots, to increase my visual motor integration as I cut along here. Perfect. Now I'm ready to cut out the rest of it. Now that I have that completed, I'm ready to clean up again. So I can take the opportunity to find the little scrap pieces of paper and again, work on my manual dexterity here, really just using the paper and kind of using my hand almost as if it was eating it. All right, so we're working on creating some great radial precision here. These are the same skills that we're gonna use when we go ahead and write. And actually sometimes we use maybe a little pom-pom or like a marble or even a piece of paper and we'll stick it on the owner's side of their hand and they'll, they'll have to hold it. So it's really gonna increase their radial precision um, when they write right there. So I'll get this crayon out of the way and I'll just continue eating this paper. So we have all of our shapes cut out. So now we can get our, our cereal box or our thin cardboard and get ready to glue these on. 
And for this, I think I'm going to separate, if I can, into the same kind of pattern that we had before. Let's see here. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to separate those into the same pattern that I had before on my paper. So it'll just be two short um, vertical strips, one long vertical strip, a small arc, and a large arc. And then I'm going to do the same on the other piece as well. Arrange these like so. And that's pretty good right there. So now we're ready to glue these pieces of paper onto our cardboard. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of the visual clutter in my station, get one of these out of the way. And then I'm going to do my, uh, my gluing here just kind of one piece at a time. Also to remove the visual clutter. So I'm really going to use this whole kind of visual area here just for my one piece. And I'm going to get my glue stick. Again, we're working on some uh, fine motor skills. So have your child remove the top of the glue stick. Um, maybe twist up from the bottom. This is great pincer grasp on both sides. Some good bilateral coordination at the midline of my body. And I'm using some fine motor skills to twist up this glue right there. All right, so I get that. And then I hold it with my non-dominant hand. This is really important. A lot of a lot of kids, they really don't incorporate their non-dominant hand to stabilize uh, paper, but we really want to make sure that we're doing that. So maybe a little hand over hand assistance. Sometimes the the kind of the weight of my own hand acts as a little hand over hand assistance. So they stabilize it there. So I'm using a good. This is actually kind of a the beginning of a dynamic tripod grasp. So. That's some really good fine motor work there. I'm stabilizing my arm to increase my fine motor action. Right there. All right. If we hold our arm up and kind of float it around, I'm really going to be using a lot more gross motor skill and kind of involvement of my deltoids to, to be doing this. But I want to stabilize my arm, increase my fine motor skills, and then we can paste it and place it down on the cardboard. And when we do that, we can take the opportunity to kind of get a little bit of a sensory experience here with some extra proprioceptive input. You can just push down a little hard. I mean, you really don't have to, but again, I'm taking this opportunity to kind of wake my fingers back up. I'm gonna say, oh yeah, we're gonna push down real hard right there. All right, so you can do that with your child as well. Now I'm ready to finish gluing. So I have my first one done. We can put this off to the side to dry. And as we wait for that to dry, we can do our second uh, piece of cardboard here. And as, as we're doing our second one, uh, we can be mindful of the placement of our objects and, and how they really kind of facilitate the development of some visual motor skills. So we want to make sure that we um, develop our visual motor skills as we go along here, maybe either vertical pursuits or some scanning. Maybe I'll put all of my pieces out here kind of around the visual field. Or maybe I want to use this opportunity to develop horizontal pursuits. So for this particular portion of the activity, I am going to use the horizontal pursuits. So I'm going to put my cardboard over here on the left side and I'm going to keep all of my strips and arcs over here on the right side so that I always have to look from the right to the left. And generally my head's not moving too much. I'm going to be using this visual field space just to scan and use the pursuits with my eyes. So I'm really developing some great visual motor skills here. Another benefit to having um, my pieces over on the right side and my cardboard on the left side is it really encourages some um, really great bilateral coordination in crossing the midline of the body. So I'm going to be using maybe my left hand 
to reach over and grab the pieces on the right side. I'm crossing the midline part of my body. And then I'll use my right hand again to kind of cross the midline of my body over to the left side to use this uh, cardboard piece here. So let's go ahead and complete this. So now I have two cardboard pages with my arcs and my straight lines. And with these, again, I'm going to cut these out from this uh, cardboard page right here. And then I'm going to use these for letter construction. So let's go ahead and focus on our fine motor skills and our bilateral coordination as we go ahead and cut these pieces out. Now that we have our cutout, we can start to build our letters. So we have, we're going to have two large arcs, two small arcs, four short straight lines, and two long straight lines. And these should all be enough for us to complete our uppercase letters. As we are constructing these letters, let's also be very mindful of the way that we actually write the letters when we form them on paper so that we're not just um, you know duplicating some line structure. There's actually a form to what we're doing. So for example, the letter A would be starting on the left side putting down the long straight line matching it with the other straight line on the other side, on the right side, and then finishing it with the small straight line in the middle. So let's go ahead and practice making our letters. So the first one we're gonna follow is in the sequence of the alphabet, alphabetical order, we are gonna make the A, starting on the left, matching it with the right, putting a line across the middle, A. Now let's do B. One long straight line. Two small arcs. B. C is pretty much just one large arc. And for D, we're going to take the large straight line and the large arc, and we're going to put down the straight line first and then we're gonna complete it with the large arc. For E, I'm going to get small straight lines and put them horizontally or perpendicularly, perpendicular to my large straight line. And it would be easy just to remove one for F, but I wanna construct it again so I'm going to use the long straight line and two short straight lines. For G, I'm going to get the large arc, place it down, and then we're just going to kind of use these small straight lines together like that to make our G. For H, I'm going to use my large straight lines, left side first, then the right side, and I'm going to finish with a small straight line in the middle. And for I, I'm going to use one large straight line, and then I'm going to top it with a small straight line, and on the bottom with a small straight line. For J, I'm going to use a large a uh, long straight line and I'm going to put a uh, small arc on the bottom 
And then I'm going to put a small straight line on the top. And for the K, I'm going to use a long straight line. And then I'm going to use two small straight lines. First on the top, and then on the bottom. For L, I'm going to use a long straight line and a short straight line. And for M, I'm going to use a long straight line, a short straight line, another short straight line, and a long straight line. For the N, I should have had a third long straight line, but since I don't and I have these small straight lines, I'll just use these instead. So I'll use a small straight line on the left, use the second straight line to bring your stroke down on a, on a uh, diagonal, and then we're going to go back up with our other small straight line. For O, we're going to use both large arcs, first on the left, then on the right. For the letter P, I'm just going to use one lar uh, long straight line and one small arc. For Q, I'm going to use the two large arcs, left, then the right, and also a small straight line. For the letter R, I will use a long straight line, a small arc, and then a small straight line. And for S, I'm just going to use two small arcs. And then for T, I'm just going to use one long straight line and two small straight lines. So one on the left and then one on the right. For you, I'm going to use a small straight line, a large arc, and then another small straight line. And for V, I'm just going to use two long straight lines. For W, I'm going to use a long straight line a small straight line, another small straight line, and then a second long straight line. For X, I'm going to use two long straight lines and have them cross. For Y, I'm going to use one long straight line and two small straight lines. And lastly, for Z, I'm going to use a small straight line, a long straight line, and another small straight line. Now that you have your own materials, you can practice constructing your own letters anytime you want. It's a great exercise for developing some visual spatial awareness. Uh, it's another kind of great opportunity for us to work on these fine motor skills with the scissors and with the glue stick as well as, say, a crayon or some other sort of writing utensil. So we have these materials. Keep these materials for, for um, work with your occupational therapist or occupational therapy assistant, occupational therapist assistant, and work on constructing these letters. And then also just really any opportunity you have to let your child gain a little independence with some of their fine motor activities keep kind of pushing their boundaries a little bit in terms of where their level of independence is. So if you're, if you are supporting them, um, say at the forearm, just a little bit of extra support at the forearm to isolate their, their fine motor skills. Maybe over time we offer a little bit less support so that they're having to stabilize their arm as they use their fine motor skills for themselves. Thanks for checking out my video. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions about how to implement these strategies with your student.